Hi y'all, this is so so blessed. Welcome to the blessed place. How y'all doing? This is the long awaited, much anticipated video about my meeting with the first lady. Let me tell you all right now, anybody who says, so what, big deal, um, she's just another human being, um, why are you so happy, um, why do people get so happy to meet um, celebrities, or why they get so happy to meet famous people, or what's so special about the first lady, whatever it is negative, you might have to say, let me just um, open the door so you can make a quiet exit. Uh, before I get started because I'm not going to let you rain on my parade. Now everybody else that's still in the room, this is for y'all to partake in my joy. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Now that we don't got the people out of the room who want to rain on my parade, all right? Um, now you know one or two will still stay in the room, right? Anyways, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to give y'all the best friend version. Now you know you got the boyfriend or girlfriend version and then you got the best friend version. The boyfriend girl the boyfriend version, you just hit the highlights, the details. When I told my husband about my day, I just basically hit the highlights and the details. I didn't give him every specific detail. Because sometimes they don't want to know every specific detail. But I know y'all want to know every detail, so I'm gonna give it to you. Let's just start out with the fact that I had to work Thursday night. I went into work at 5.30 p.m. and I got off work at uh, almost 6 a.m. the very next morning, Friday morning. I just mentioned that to let you know that's just how badly I wanted to see the first lady that after working all night long on my third consecutive 12-hour shift, I went to my girlfriend's house that's nearby my job took me a nice lovely shower put on my smell good changed my clothes and went straight to the church where the first lady was now the first lady was in town as one of the stops on her let's move campaign if you are not familiar with her campaign let's move then just google it it's just a few bigger steps away uh, but it's basically was the second anniversary of her Let's Move campaign and where she just basically encouraging us as adults to get moving so that we can be examples to children is basically to save our children from obesity and all of the negative things that come with obesity such as diabetes and heart problems, low self-esteem, etc. That's what Let's Move is about. So she chose Orlando, well actually it was Longwood but um, it's about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes from Orlando. She chose uh, to come to Longwood, Orlando area um, as one of the stops along the way. So, okay, I get to the church at about 8 a.m. No, she was, it was starting at 8, so I get to the church at about 7.30 a.m. And um, I go walk in line and there are probably about I'm gonna say 500 a thousand people in line before me but that's okay it was well worth waiting on the first lady so I get in line of course I go I, my girlfriend one of my girlfriends and a few other people who were in our VIP group were um, already in line and I just skipped you know a few people and went on up, up in line with my friends well we had VIP um, seating but we still had to wait in line with everybody and the way I got these VIP tickets was one of my girlfriends is very good friends with Secret Service yes um, the first lady's very own personal Secret Service so um, I got friends in low places. No, that's the wrong song. And I got friends in high places. Anyway, y'all know what I mean. So, um, so we eventually get inside where the first lady is, and we get in there and we sit. And uh, they had several people to come out and speak before the first lady. Uh, you had uh, several pastors that came out. They gave a little encouraging word, 
and they had kind of like their own agenda that they very nicely tied in with the first lady's agenda basically talking about you know our bodies being our temple and taking good care of ourselves and how the churches can get involved and being good examples you know to um, to people as far as taking better care of our bodies and let's moving so they did you know they did about four or five speakers came and they did an excellent job one speaker in particular that really impressed upon me was and I believe his name is Brian Miller and I hope I got it right I tried to google it and I think I found him and I think his name is Brian Miller but he's an author um, but the significance of this guy Brian Miller is that he told us that he had lost a hundred and sixty pounds over the last six or seven years and he he relayed a story where he hated exercise he uh, he abhorred exercise because he said you know you sign up for at, at these gyms and you do all this exercise and you can barely lift your arms your legs you know you, you hate going but then he met this guy like he had a coffee shop or something. he met this guy who was a trainer and the guy wanted to write a book and he asked the guy um, could you help me train and lose weight and the guy said well if you help me write a book the boy the guy said I'll help you write a book if you help me train and he said their very first session they met at the gym and he got on the extra bike and he and he's moving 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 and the trainer told him slow down you're going a little too fast you want to be able to exercise and still be able to talk you know a little bit and he said you know he had never heard of this before and after 20 minutes the trainer said okay that's it and he was like, what? What do you mean? That's it. And the trainer told him, this is the point that I want to make to you that really, really impressed upon me. And it does, and it has something to do with let's move. So I want you to say, Deidre, get to the good part. What does that have to do with the story? But maybe this will help someone because it just, uh, it was a light bulb moment for me. Brian Miller said that his trainer told him, don't let anyone make you feel guilty about doing at least 20 minutes of workout a day so if all you got is 20 minutes and that's all you can give is 20 minutes or that's all you decide to do is 20 minutes don't ever let anyone make you feel guilty about that 20 minutes the main thing is consistency let's move consistently y'all since I heard that from Monday and today is Friday, I have been moving consistently for at least 20 minutes, then 20 to 30 minutes. I'll go to LA Fitness and it takes me about 15 minutes to drive to LA Fitness. I'll do my 20, 30 minutes and then 15 minutes back and hey, in an hour, I'm done. Um, as opposed to thinking I gotta, I gotta stay in the gym for three hours. Now, of course, um, like any habit, you form a habit in a few weeks, you want to, you start craving more. So after a while, that 20 minutes is going to build to 30, to 40, to an hour, etc. But don't let anybody make you feel guilty about at least doing 20 minutes. Okay, let's move on to the good stuff. Okay, after several people talk, then, um, then um, I don't keep wanting to call the lady Jackie Joyner, but she is Tom Joyner's wife. She is Joyner. Um, Robinson Joyner. Dang. Okay, I'll get her name in a few minutes. But anyway, Tom Joyner's wife, uh, she came out and she is kind of like an ambassador for um, the Let's Move campaign because she's an expert, you know, physical trainer. So she got out and she got us praising the Lord. Let's do some praises this way and let's reach that way and let's do this and let's do that. And I was like, hey, I did not come here to exercise. I did not come here to move. I know this is the first lady's let's move campaign, but I came here to see the first lady. And when I get to have my moment with the first lady, I would not be all hot and sweaty. You could have had my secret on. So anyways, we got moving with um, Donna Richardson Joyner. Woo! Sometime 45. A terrible, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Okay, I digress. Donna Richardson Joyner. So she had us moving and stretching and bending and touching toes. Well, ain't gonna lie, I ain't touch my toes. But anyway, um, you know, had us moving, and she just encouraged us to to get moving. And she was she was funny. She was adorable. She was energetic, 
fine. Don't know, don't know. You know what to do with that. Anyways, so um, beautiful. So I really enjoyed um, Donna getting us moving. But like I say, I, I did not come there to move. Okay, so move on from there. Then we had, um, um, come on, mine, don't fail me. Yolanda Adams. Yolanda Adams came out. She sang a song. And the song she sang, I can't remember, but I'm going to attack it. As the song went on, she got better, but it's it, she wasn't lip syncing. I don't know if this is called lip syncing. She was singing. I definitely knew it was her singing, but maybe her she was singing on top of her own lyrics, you know what I mean? And it was just a little off. It, it's like it took about halfway through the song for her to catch up and get her lips synced up with the music, and she just didn't seem to be full of energy. You know, maybe she was tired. Who knows how, you know, maybe this was you know, maybe several days into the campaign. I don't know what it was, but um, I enjoyed her, but I just thought she didn't come 100% full force with all her energy and everything. Or maybe, I don't know. But anyways, I enjoyed her. But, you know, we just got one song out of, uh, from Yolanda Adams. And also, too, it's kind of hard to come out there and present to people when people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. Give us the first lady. Come on now. Give us the first lady. So I guess it's kind of hard to proceed the first lady. Um, then, okay. Drum roll. The first lady comes out. So the first lady gives her talk on let's move and she presented it so eloquently and articulately and effortlessly and I'm like oh my god I want to be able to public speak like that but I don't even know if she had a note I don't know if she brought notes up there I think I don't know if she, I don't know what well, she didn't bring notes but you know maybe her people might have already had the notes sitting on the podium but if they did she barely glanced at any notes and she was flawless there was no um ahs wails uh, she was effortless flawless gracious beautiful fine no disrespect first lady because I know you go watch this one day no disrespect but you are fine you are welcome. I am not going to disrespect the first lady or our president like that. Anyway. Well, we are all here today for one very simple reason. Because we love our children. And we are determined to build a future that is worthy of their rights. That's what so many of you are doing every day in your congregations and in your communities. Uh, whether you volunteer with homeless ministry of a food bank, whether you're fighting for better health care or a cleaner environment every day, so many of you are taking on the most urgent challenges of our time. Every day you're serving God by serving Yeah, so it was awesome um, listening to her Let's Move. It was very motivational. Uh, she has this statistics to 
uh, back up all the different things she was saying. And um, what I love about her campaign is that although I'm sure there are many naysayers, many obstacles, many people who say this can't be done, this shouldn't be done, government should not regulate uh, what our children should be eating or what our children should be doing, but I applaud you First Lady for persevering regardless in spite of the naysayers, in spite of um, all obstacles, in spite of what seemed to be insurmountable odds. I applaud you for taking on this Let's Move campaign and focusing your efforts on um, on di on diabetes and heart problems and all of that, that our children, it's inevitable that they are going to have these problems because we as people and even our children are getting more and more obese. Okay, I'm the last one to talk, but I'm just stating the facts. Okay, so anyways, Amy, our... Um, a Secret Service friend had already told us as soon as the um, First Lady is done talking, she's going to come up to kind of like you say the velvet rope because they had you know the little velvet rope um, cart cordoning off where you know the First Lady will be standing behind the rope. And it was very low, you know, like weight a little lower than waist high, so it wasn't like uh, you know it was up here and she was you could barely see her head over there, it was about just you know, waist high. And so soon as, you know, she said her thank yous and she got her standing ovation, I was, I was already sitting, oh yes, VIP section. I was sitting in row two, row two. And because my arms are so long, I really could have just reached right across and almost touched, well, not where she was, but touched across the velvet rope. So anyways, immediately after she came towards um, where we were sitting and I jumped up and y'all ain't never seen a big gal move so fast. <laughs> Most businesses y'all I move like a turtle but I was like <laughs> to my, let's move. First lady I was moving. <laughs> so I got to the velvet rope and she started about mm, eight people down to my left and she was uh, talking and hugging and she lingered a little while with my girlfriend where she, my, one of my friends the first, my friend that provided the ticket because her secret service uh, was there and he told her this is my family so she talked to them hugged took pictures lingered a little bit with them and then she came down and I just patiently waited for her to come you know continue to work in the rope and she came and when she came she she put her hand extended her hand out to me and y'all I took her hand all wrong instead of graciously and delicately you know grabbing her you know you know shaking her hand like a normal because I'd already said to myself okay I'm gonna have to shake put you know put a hand out and then you know and then put my other hand you know put my right hand out then put my other hand on top of hers you know that gracious when she put her hand out there y'all I grabbed it like this like a man <laughs> you know how men you know when they greet each other yo man what's up I grabbed the hand like this and I was like, okay, it's too late now to be like, let me hold the hand the right way. So I just continue holding it. And I'm looking at her in her eyes. She's looking at me in my eyes. And we're both tall. I mean, she's tall, but of course she's not as tall as I am. But she, she you know, she's rather tall. She's already, I think she's 5'11", 6 feet. Then she had on heels. Well, I'm 6'2", and I have on my heels. So, but we had a meeting of the mind. You know, um, I know she had to keep it moving and she couldn't really stop and say a whole lot to me. Um, but I know in her mind, she was thinking, oh my God, I love your smile. I know she was thinking, oh, you are rocking that fro. Oh, you know, I know she was thinking, thank you for working all night long and coming out to see me, um, even though you haven't had sleep in hours. Um, I know she was thinking, oh, another tall female. Because, you know, when you I, you identify, when you see somebody else, when you're 6'2 or 6 feet and you see another woman 6'2, six, six, you know, you're in the grocery store, uh, you're anywhere at the mall, you just you identify with that person. So I know she, you know, all of this was going on in her head. I know. I read it. I saw it in her eyes when we made eye contact. You know, and she was like, oh, my God, I love your smile. Oh, my goodness. I love your fro, girl. You are rocking that natural fro. Oh my, I really appreciate you staying up all night long. You know, I know there was so much going on through her mind, but because of time constraints, what she said was, 
I said, oh my goodness, First Lady, I love you. You are so awesome. I love you so much. And she said, thank you. Well, when I first said, I love you, she said, thank you. And then I said, oh my goodness, you, I admire you so much. You, I love you. And she said, thank you a second time. So in essence, what she said out of her mouth to me was, thank you. Oh, thank you. But in the recesses of her mind, I know she was thinking all of that other stuff, but Secret Service was moving her along that we couldn't really, you know, have that explicit interpersonal conversation. But I know one day over tea or something like that, she will tell me how she was thinking all of that stuff. So anyways, my cousin was there and he was behind me with his, um, you know, I was flashing photos of her when she was like, you know, working the line. But by the time she got to me, y'all was just like, okay, I can either try to figure out this camera, how to hold this camera to, to get a good angle of us both, or I can turn around and give my full attention to the first lady and not worry about this camera. So that's what I decided to do. I was like, I gotta give my full attention to the first lady. So that's how my cousin, who just happened to be behind me and who happened to have a professional camera, he's a professional photographer, and he snapped about 20 pictures of me and the first lady. And he kept calling, I had no I did, had no idea until afterwards, he kept calling me for me to turn around. He, you know, And I had no idea, I was so enthralled with this conversation that the first lady and I were having, that we were engaged in, I was so enthralled with that, that I didn't realize that uh, my cousin was trying to get me to turn around so that we could get the money shot. So that's why you will see uh, pictures of you know, me and the first lady and you see the back of my head. But anyway, so she, you know, we had our moment and she moved on down the line and I continued to snap pictures as she moved on down the line. So that was my first lady moment. You all, I was, I'm still railing from um, just having been in her presence. She is, I always thought that she was uh, beautiful. I always thought that she was, I always thought that she was, um, had a, had a nice face physical uh, appearance, um, nice body. Um, I always thought that she was very intelligent. I always thought that she was very funny, that she was very real and down to earth. But I got a chance to confirm that and to see that up close, up close and personal, y'all. She is beautiful. She is beautiful. Um, she is warm. She's gracious. Uh, she is so intelligent. Uh, she's funny. Um, I just got to see all of that, you know, up front. She's very warm, like I say, and and, and I know that um, that we had that 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 connection, you know. And uh, Sandy, who's I walk for TNT, had made a comment on my video, on um, one of my early videos, and said that you know, Deidre, with your magnetic personality, I'm su I'm surprised that she doesn't. Have she hasn't been talking to the president about you being a cabinet member. And Sandy, I believe they're in negotiations right now. I believe they're having that talk. So at any time now, you know, um, who knows if my phone may ring and it's the White House, you know, telling me that the um, First Lady, um, you know, just was just drawn to my magnetic personality and that she wants me to come have tea with her. And, you know, so I'm sure they're in negotiations right now. So. Um, First Lady, um, my phone number is uh, 321-555. <laughs> you know how to find me. Just leave a comment yeah. or tweet me. Anyways, y'all, that is my um, experience with the First Lady. Thank you all for partaking in my joy. And for those of you who all um, were anticipating this video, I hope it's everything that you had hoped it to be and um, and I hope you enjoy the pictures and the video footage that I'll attach to this. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Home first lady.